stroke occurs when there is an interruption or significant reduction in blood supply to a part of the brain. This deprivation of blood flow prevents brain tissue from receiving vital oxygen and nutrients, leading to rapid cell death. The consequences of a stroke can be severe and long-lasting, making it a critical medical emergency that demands immediate attention. The urgency in treating stroke stems from the fact that brain cells begin to die within minutes of oxygen deprivation, emphasizing the time-sensitive nature of stroke intervention. Ischemic stroke. Ischemic stroke, the most prevalent type, results from a blockage in a blood vessel supplying the brain. This blockage is typically caused by a blood clot, medically termed a thrombus. These clots often form in arteries that have been narrowed over time by the accumulation of fatty deposits, a condition known as atherosclerosis. The carotid arteries in the neck are common sites for such blockages. When blood flow is obstructed, the affected brain tissue experiences ischemia, a state of oxygen and nutrient deprivation. The primary focus of treatment in ischemic stroke is to restore blood flow as quickly as possible, aiming to salvage brain tissue and minimize potential long-term disabilities. Hemorrhagic stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke, while less common than ischemic stroke, occurs when a blood vessel in the brain ruptures or leaks causing bleeding within the brain tissue. This type of stroke, also referred to as a brain hemorrhage, can result from various factors. Uncontrolled high blood pressure is a significant risk factor as it can weaken blood vessel walls over time. Aneurysms, which are bulges in weakened blood vessel walls, pose another risk as they can rupture and lead to bleeding. Additionally, arteriovenous malformations, which are tangled clusters of abnormally formed blood vessels, can also be a source of brain hemorrhages. The treatment approach for hemorrhagic stroke primarily focuses on controlling the bleeding and reducing pressure on the brain, often through a combination of medications and, in severe cases, surgical intervention. Early recognition of stroke symptoms, FAST. Early recognition of stroke symptoms is crucial for timely intervention. The FAST acronym, serves as an effective tool for identifying potential stroke symptoms. F. Face drooping. One side of the face may droop or feel numb. Ask the person to smile and observe for unevenness. A. Arm weakness. One arm may become weak or numb. Ask the person to raise both arms and note if one arm drifts downward. S. Speech difficulty. Speech may become slurred or strange. Ask the person to repeat a simple sentence and listen for any abnormalities. T. Time to call emergency services. If any of these signs are observed, it's crucial to call for emergency medical help immediately. The FAST method emphasizes the importance of quick action in stroke cases. Prompt medical intervention can significantly improve outcomes and reduce the risk of long-term disabilities. Subtypes of ischemic stroke. Cerebral thrombosis. Cerebral thrombosis occurs when a blood clot forms directly within an artery that supplies blood to the brain. This type of ischemic stroke is often associated with atherosclerosis, where plaque buildup in the arteries creates a surface for clot formation. The gradual narrowing of the artery due to plaque accumulation can eventually lead to a complete blockage, cutting off blood supply to a specific region of the brain. Cerebral embolism. In contrast to thrombosis, cerebral embolism involves a blood clot that originates elsewhere in the body and travels through the bloodstream until it lodges in a brain artery. These traveling clots, or emboli, often form in the heart, particularly in individuals with atrial fibrillation, a type of irregular heartbeat. As the embolus moves through progressively smaller blood vessels, it eventually becomes trapped, blocking blood flow to part of the brain and causing an ischemic stroke. Subtypes of hemorrhagic stroke. Intracerebral hemorrhage. Intracerebral hemorrhage, the more common type of hemorrhagic stroke, involves bleeding directly into the brain tissue. This form of stroke is often associated with chronic high blood pressure, which can weaken the walls of small arteries over time. As people age, the risk of intracerebral hemorrhage increases due to the natural weakening of blood vessels. 
When these weakened vessels rupture, they cause bleeding into the surrounding brain tissue, leading to damage and increased pressure within the skull. Subarachnoid hemorrhage Subarachnoid hemorrhage occurs when there is bleeding into the space between the brain and the skull, an area normally filled with cerebrospinal fluid. This type of hemorrhagic stroke is often caused by the rupture of an aneurysm, a weak, bulging area on the wall of an artery. When an aneurysm on the brain surface bursts, it releases blood into the subarachnoid space, causing sudden, severe headache and potentially life-threatening complications. Transient Ischemic Attack TIA. A transient ischemic attack, often referred to as a mini-stroke, presents with stroke-like symptoms that typically resolve within minutes, though they can last up to 24 hours. While TIAs don't cause permanent damage, they serve as a crucial warning sign of an impending stroke. TIAs occur due to a temporary reduction in blood flow to a part of the brain, often caused by a small blood clot or fatty deposit that temporarily blocks an artery. Despite their transient nature, TIs indicate an increased risk of experiencing a full-blown stroke in the near future. Therefore, it's crucial to seek immediate medical attention even if you suspect a TI, as it provides an opportunity for preventive measures to be implemented. Diagnosing Stroke The diagnosis of stroke involves a multifaceted approach. Initially, Healthcare providers perform a thorough physical and neurological examination to assess the patient's symptoms and overall condition. This examination helps evaluate brain function and identify specific areas of concern. Blood tests are typically conducted to assess overall health, identify potential stroke risk factors such as high cholesterol or diabetes, and rule out other conditions that may mimic stroke symptoms. Imaging tests play a crucial role in stroke diagnosis. Computed tomography scans provide rapid imaging of the brain and can quickly distinguish between ischemic and hemorrhagic strokes. CT angiography, or traditional angiography, offers detailed images of the blood vessels and helps detect blockages or abnormalities. Magnetic resonance imaging offers more detailed images of the brain and can detect small, early strokes that might not be visible on a CT scan. These imaging techniques are essential for visualizing the brain and blood vessels, identifying the type and location of the stroke, and assessing the extent of damage, all of which guide treatment decisions. Treatment of Ischemic Stroke The treatment of ischemic stroke focuses primarily on restoring blood flow to the affected area of the brain. Medications play a crucial role in this process. Thrombolytic drugs such as Altaplace, also known as Tissue Plasminogen Activator or TPA, are often the first line of treatment. These medications work to dissolve the blood clot and restore blood flow. However, they are most effective when administered within 3 to 4.5 hours of symptom onset, underscoring the importance of rapid medical intervention. In addition to thrombolytic drugs, Medications to reduce brain swelling may be administered. This is crucial as edema, a common complication of stroke, can further damage brain tissue if left unmanaged. For larger blood clots that may not be completely dissolved by medication, a procedure called mechanical thrombectomy may be employed. This minimally invasive procedure involves threading a catheter through an artery, typically in the groin, to the blocked artery in the brain. A stent retriever is then deployed to capture and remove the clot, restoring blood flow. Treatment of hemorrhagic stroke. The treatment approach for hemorrhagic stroke differs from that of ischemic stroke, focusing on controlling bleeding and reducing pressure on the brain. Medications play a vital role in managing hemorrhagic stroke. Drugs to control blood pressure are crucial as elevated blood pressure can exacerbate bleeding. Additionally, medications to reduce brain swelling are often used to alleviate pressure on the brain. In some cases, surgical intervention may be necessary. For aneurysms, a procedure called surgical clipping may be performed. This involves placing a tiny metal clip at the base of the aneurysm to prevent further bleeding. Alternatively, a less invasive procedure called endovascular coiling may be used. Similar to mechanical thrombectomy, 
This procedure uses a catheter to deliver tiny coils to the site of the aneurysm, blocking blood flow and preventing rupture. Stroke prevention, lifestyle changes. Preventing stroke involves understanding and managing risk factors, many of which can be modified through lifestyle changes. Adopting a balanced diet low in fats, cholesterol, and sodium, while rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, can help manage weight, blood pressure, and cholesterol levels, all crucial for stroke prevention. Regular physical activity is another key component of stroke prevention. Engaging in at least 30 minutes of moderate-intensity exercise most days of the week can improve cardiovascular health, lower blood pressure, and help manage weight. Quitting smoking is paramount for stroke prevention, as tobacco use significantly increases stroke risk. Moderating alcohol consumption is also important, as excessive intake can raise blood pressure and contribute to other stroke risk factors. Stroke prevention Medical management. In addition to lifestyle modifications, medical management plays a crucial role in stroke prevention. Controlling high blood pressure through a combination of lifestyle changes and medications is essential, as hypertension is a leading risk factor for stroke. Similarly, maintaining healthy cholesterol levels through diet, exercise, and medications when needed is crucial for reducing stroke risk. For individuals with diabetes, Keeping blood sugar levels within a healthy range through lifestyle changes and medication is vital. Diabetes is a significant risk factor for stroke, and proper management can substantially reduce this risk. It's important for patients to take any prescribed medications as directed by their healthcare provider, particularly antiplatelet drugs. These medications, which include aspirin, clopidogrel, and dipyridamol, play a vital role in reducing the risk of blood clot formation that can lead to strokes. Consistent and proper use of these antiplatelet agents can significantly lower your stroke risk by improving blood flow and preventing the formation of dangerous clots in your arteries and blood vessels. By combining lifestyle modifications with appropriate medical management, individuals can significantly reduce their risk of experiencing a stroke. Regular checkups and open communication with healthcare providers are essential components of an effective stroke prevention strategy. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.